Coming up next on the SPNN Forum, we have Tish Jones, founder and executive director of True Art Speaks. Hi, I'm Martin Ludden, Executive Director of the St. Paul Neighborhood Network, and we are here live in the Kwame McDonald Studio at SPNN with Tish Jones, Executive Director and Founder of True Art Speaks. Tish, welcome to the forum. Thank you for having me. And welcome back to SPNN. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> um, so True Art Speaks came out in 2006, was that when that, you founded it? That is correct. And what did, like, how did that come to be? Oh man, this story is interesting. I would say the shortest version is there were three major happenings in that time period. In 2005, two happenings occurred. Um, one was um, I took a trip to an international youth poetry slam festival as a youth. I was, cool. I was still in high school um, and I saw the power of spoken word and hip hop culture yeah. um, and how it could activate and inspire and open up space for young people to tell these really radical truths. Yeah. I brought that energy back home. Um, subsequently, um, Minnesota hosted the first um, annual Be Girl Be Festival, which mm -hmm. was the first international celebration of women in hip hop. And that was at Intermedia, right? That was at That's, Intermedia yeah. Arts. Cool. And Five women co-founders who I deeply respect and love were a part of that. I was also a part of that, again, as a youth. Yeah. Um, I was a young person uh, participating in that festival, and I was able to meet some of, you know, some of the women in hip-hop that I had studied and looked up to and listened to and, you know, marveled at their work for yeah. years, right? So, again, really looking at the power of hip-hop and specifically, like, the power of women as leaders and change yeah. makers in hip hop and the stories that women needed to tell through this vehicle, right? Um, and then, so, and then the year after, 2006, when I founded Shore Speaks, the third sort of happening was social, right? And that's where sort of the, the lens toward liberation and social justice come from in our work. That year, um, 2006, Minneapolis had the third highest murder rate per capita in the country around August, and I had been working with the then Peace Foundation, and part of my, you know, responsibility uh, in that space as a practicing poet was to attend the vigils of, in of individuals who had been murdered um, in the city, in North Minneapolis specifically, and share poetry, create new poetry, et cetera. And, you know, as you can imagine, that was, it, it became, heartbreaking, mm -hmm. traumatic, um, and because I had had these other experiences, I started to really think about, you know, what does wellness look like? How do we engage with young people around their creative practice? Um, what does it look like to try to advance change um, in a way that, in a way that, you know, calls folks to action? Like, there is a part of, part of this work, right? That's what there's a form in poetry called elegy. Elegies are similar to eulogies, and it's yeah. like we do want to eulogize people and celebrate their life and honor their lives. We also want to, I, right, and my peers, we also were thinking about what do calls to action look like and how mm -hmm. can we be active in our art in that way and call yeah. people to change behaviors and change what's happening in our community. So all of those things, it was like it was sort of this conjuring of power and synergy. It came together all at the same time, and I'm like, yo, I'm a hip hop kid, right. right? And I feel called and compelled to think about the ways that my art can transform my community. Mm -hmm. My peers, we were thinking about the ways our art could transform. So the founding was really just this, this mixture of those three things and a lot of really deep reflection and conversation with you know, my peers and my community about the space we needed yeah. um, to be you know, actively engaged young citizens um, in the arts. Yeah. That is a huge endorsement for youth arts programming. Yeah. Just, just right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but where did you go? Where was the international trip? So it was uh, the International Youth Poetry Slam Festival is called Brave New Voices, which I had the privilege of directing for about five years also, um, later on in life. But um, that first year, it was in San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. I and, just, when, you hear, when you say international, I think, I think of hip hop as such an oh, American yeah. form. 
that I'm curious about what it looks like. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I know it's other places too, but. Oh, yeah. 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 So the, the model for Brave New Voices was that we would, um, so it was international. It happened in the U.S. every mm -hmm. year, but we invited folks yeah. from other countries. So there were teams from Guam, from Trinidad, from Ireland, South Africa. I mean, just, it was truly an international representation of young voices. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Nice. Yeah. And well, and that's also, so you talk about um, in 2006, seeing that that need and that that work, but you were not, like you were still very much a young person. Oh, I mean, yeah. we still are, but. <laughs> Thank you for saying that, I, um, I think so. But you weren't far out of high school when you, when you identified that and started moving on that. Yeah, so in 2005, I was still in high school. I graduated in 2005, and in 2006, that's when I started yeah. True Art Speak. So I was a year out of high school. And you know, part of the impetus was some of the young people who were murdered that year, whose vigil I had to attend and speak at, and whose family, you know, I knew those, yeah. the young people specifically. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I was just another sort of charge. Like, how do I, right. what does it look like to try to shift culture and yeah. shift the stories we're telling ourselves, shift the stories of, about us also, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, as a young person, I felt yeah. really driven. Yeah, that's, I just, and I think we saw a lot of it in the protest movements in 2022, but watching, like, what about your experience, especially I think in arts, put you in a place where you felt like you had like the power and the voice and the ability to step up and do that yeah like as a young person so i think that's twofold right i think that i had the privilege of growing up in a family um that supported my voice yeah. right and i think that's where it started for mm -hmm. me um and, you know, an activist or community center family. My grandfather was a Black Panther. So that call to action piece, the right. support your community, sort of the knowledge of self was embedded in my everyday life. And yeah. I was raised by my grandparents. Yeah. So um, I think it actually started there. And the arts, I think, you know, I was just privileged to be in this community and raised underneath, you know, folks like, Jodis Powell and Carolyn Holbrook and, you know, the Minnesota Spoken Word Association. So this community and, you know, like I said, the folks who started Be Girl Be. So your your Desdemona's, your um, Deanna Cummings, mm -hmm. this community has such a rich yeah. and like wide just there are so many stars here. <laughs> right. To follow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And to, to look at, to, to emulate, to to model um, after. So I think being under the tutelage of this community, I was able to find my own voice with this support. I mean, you know, Manco and Dosi, I could just go down the list of people who were like, "We, I wanna support you, what yeah. does that look like? And you, you know, you have talent. Um, I think Minnesota, the Twin Cities specifically, were just so blessed yeah. with such a rich community of people who want to give of themselves to see the next generation flourish. I feel like, and maybe it's just Minnesota exceptionalism, but <laughs> I feel like <laughs> our kind of art and music scene does that well oh, yeah. and that not everybody does. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think that we're generous. That's the, that is, I think the word we're generous. And I think we have a sense of how important it is to share like intergenerationally, mm -hmm. right? Like. I think about, you know, Auntie Beverly Copman, who just transitioned into mm -hmm. an elder, uh, Shay. Uh, she, you know, and the other members of the Black Storytellers Alliance, I think about the Zulus, I think about Elder Naima. We have these elders who make it a point to connect with the younger generation. Mm -hmm. They've been modeling for decades yeah. how to do this work well. Right. There's just a generosity of spirit, a generosity of education, a generosity of, how, you know, modeling how to be with one another and bring the next generation forward. But then also how to look back. Right. Mm -hmm. So being raised by them, we also know it is our responsibility to raise the next generation yeah. up. 
Yeah, I want to come back to that. Yeah. Because I think that's part of what you're up to now. In 2006, what did that founding look like? What was True Art Speaks about then? And is it the same as it is now, or kind of has there been an evolution? No, man, it is <laughs> completely changed and morphed. There's like, to me, when I think about True Art Speaks, I think there's two foundings. Yeah. So in 2006, it was like, you know, guerrilla street mm -hmm. art, a collective of yeah. folks, right? It started with Tish Jones and it grew into a collective of folks who were really speaking to social issues using hip hop as a vehicle. Yeah. And it was, all, you know, all of the different mediums, which we right. have talked about, right? Where there was hip hop, there was break dancing, there was emceeing, there was poetry. So the elements were there, right? Graffiti. Yeah. And we would do, do shows, you know, at the Capri Theater, at the Bean Scene, quite literally on the street, mm -hmm. on the buses, whatever. Um, and that was 2006 until about 2013. And then in 2013, that's where I say we had a second founding. And that's when there was, there was a body of young people who they were interested in more support for mm -hmm. their voices as poets and more support um, in terms of branching out of Minnesota and finding that sort of regional and national network. And they yeah. came to me, they said, hey, can you, you know, can you help us out? We wanna do this. And you know, we're, we don't know if we have the same support we used to. And that is when we actually decided to take the journey to incorporate. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so um, that was 2013 and that's when the sort of model shifted to really center education and to center youth development differently than we were thinking about civic engagement and sort of the application yeah. of the tools. Yeah. Cool. And so is that kind of that 2013 refounding, that's the model you're still in yes. now? Yes. We are very much in that model. Okay. Yes. Can you talk about that? I usually kick these off with like, tell us about the mission, but yeah, we, yeah. I got off a little bit. So. Oh, good. No, <laughs> I like it. It's a, it's a, it's a good pathway. Um, so our mission is to cultivate literacy, leadership, and social justice through the study and activation of spoken word and hip hop culture. So when we're talking hip hop, also it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop this year, you know. Um, so when we're talking hip hop, we're talking all elements of hip hop. Some people say there are four core elements of hip hop. That includes emceeing, DJing, graffiti, um, and breaking. Break yeah. yeah. So those are what some people say the four core elements of hip hop. We think about hip hop in terms of nine elements, and that's how we sort of think about this larger culture. Yeah. So that would incorporate knowledge of self, which is, in our opinion, the foundation. It's the most important element. Um, mm -hmm. And beatboxing, fashion, entrepreneurialism, um, and language. I think that, that I hit all nine. Um, so th that's sort of the realm of our work, and we're thinking about that work in terms of like how we're, so I'll say this, we believe that hip hop is one of the most impactful forms of media, period. Yeah. Right, like right now, and probably in the history of the United States, um, hip hop has done things that we haven't actually seen another art form and or sort of cultural phenomena within the arts do, right? Mm -hmm. um, 1983, when the message came out, it shifted the perception of America, right, to a, to a global community, right? right? In 1983, what, what, the, what everyone outside of America was able to see was, like, oh, no, there's, there's ghettos in America. We didn't know that because right. before the message came out, before that video came out, what the, the idea was, America was just, you know, nuclear families, picket fences, right. and people yeah. enjoyed their experience here. Two so, cars in the suburbs. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So um, that's, that's sort of what happened. So when that's the mission of, hip, of True Art Speaks and how we're thinking about hip hop is, like, how are we contributing to, you know, pushing against that dominant narrative? How are we contributing to narrative shift mm -hmm. and telling authentic stories about the communities that we're serving, right? Um, and honoring to your point, uh, you know, about 2020 and yeah. myself as a young person really thinking about activation of story right. and voice. How are we all really engaging in and investing in young people, letting them know that their stories matter, their experiences matter, yeah. and cultivating, like studying, learning, shaping your story, and then applying that to change, mm -hmm. to positive social transformation is something within your reach. Yeah. And it's something that the world needs if we are thinking about our collective liberation. Yeah, I love that.
Yeah, mouthful. <laughs> mouthful. <laughs> if you're just joining us, we are here on the SPNN forum talking to Tish Jones, founder and executive director of True Art Speaks. Um, that angle to youth empowerment and education and art and all of that, did that just come through organically? I mean, is that the like, that's the model you were raised in? Yeah. And then you just picked it up and kept, not just, but yeah, <laughs> and you yeah. picked it up and kept it going. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the medicine that I needed. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that there's a lot of us, right? Like public speaking being the number one fear for, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. A lot of us are really trying to find our own voices yeah. and figure out, you know, when and how it's safe to use them and then if it's mm -hmm. not safe how to be brave enough to use our voices anyway yep. um, and oftentimes it's speaking to our core needs mm -hmm. right like how what do I like what do I need to be safe oftentimes okay. that's when it requires us to be brave and use our voices yeah and that can look like food shelter housing or it can look like you know speaking out against racism police brutality um, disparities in education, whatever it is, right. right? And we want to encourage people to use their voices to be brave because that's how things change, yeah. right? Um, when we are silent or when we are silenced, yeah. that's when we undergo the, the most pain, the most traumatizing experiences, right? And if yeah. we can support young people in being brave early enough, what we're, what we're you know, helping to cultivate is a generation of leaders, mm -hmm. right? Fearless thought leaders, and speakers, um, the people who will, you know, write us into the future we want to see. Yeah. It strikes me that when you're talking about kind of feeling that safety, if you're starting someone finding that safety of getting up in front of a group of maybe even a friendly audience, yeah. which is still terrifying, right. <laughs> that when it is time to step up in the front of, you know, either retribution socially mm. or physically mm -hmm. or legally, that it gets that much easier if you've got the practice. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it takes practice. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So there's an avenue for that. For sure. Um, you are, you call yourself a poet. That's one of the ways you identify. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how does that track in with, with hip hop and poetry? And where do they, like, where do they cross and where do they inform each other? And where are they just the same? Yeah. So one of the, you know, arguably, Folks would say one of the greatest MCs of all time, KRS-One. Um, he talks about that MCing element and the relationship to poetry as you know being very, very closely linked. Um, in that, to be an MC, you must be a poet, mm -hmm. right? Um, part of it is that divine speech. It is understanding poetics, um, and you know, just outside of that, the acronym for rap is rhythm and poetry. Mm. So the two are very closely connected, right? Yeah. I think spoken word, like back in the day, like in the, in the 60s, cats would call it the spoken word. Mm -hmm. The spoken word, words that you speak, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But it's not new, you know? Um, the last poets, like we inherit this from the last poets. We inherit this art form from a Mary Baraka, right? Um, I would say Allen Ginsberg and Lawrence Ferling Ferlinghetti, they have something to do with the way that spoken word mm -hmm. exists today. Um, so first things first, there ain't nothing new under the sun. Yeah. That's a, you know, that's <laughs> right. one of the philosophies culturally, right? Yeah. Um, so we understand that what we are doing has been done before and we're standing on the shoulders of our ancestors, but the two art forms are intricately linked. Every amazing and incredible MC that you listen to or rapper, um, they're master poets. Yeah. They had to master language to get to this point. Right. Yeah. Um, you have a couple things coming up, or at least one big thing coming up with oh, yeah. True Art Speaks. Yeah. Want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have two things. I'm going to talk two about things. two things. Yes. Really important. The, the, we, so True Art Speaks has presented an open mic called the Reverb Open Mic. At this point, I think we're going into our 12th year nice. with this open mic. And we're moving into a new space. Okay. So that's the most important. Cool. We are partnering um, with Flava Cafe on the corner of Dalen University every week. Nice. We will have a free, all ages, intergenerational open mic at Flava Cafe on Thursdays from 6 to 8 p.m. Every single week. corner is that? 
So we've got Rondo Library, we've got... Yeah, so it's on the northwest corner of okay. Dalen University. Cool. Yep, for all the folks with cardinal direction yep. sensibility, it's on the northwest corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, it's, a, it's a new space. We're really excited. Sweet. We love the owner. Um, she's amazing. So, and, and just in general, Flav is a really beautiful yeah. space. It's really thoughtful. Cool. Um, there are books that you can read. You know, it's a thoughtful space. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I'm excited just to have a home, to have a home for artists right. of all disciplines to know, like, this yeah. is your spot. Mm -hmm. right here every week so you can build that yeah habit. <laughs> you know list comes it's yeah. list goes out first come first serve we've had you know hometown favorites come through we've had ashley dubose in this space we've had dua salah in this space who is doing amazing things with mm -hmm. their career right now so it's um it's one of my favorite programs because it is where you get to come and practice and bounce ideas yep. off of other folks and yeah. it's um it's an interactive space Folks are in the audience with the intention to give feedback mm -hmm. on new works that are presented. Cool. And that's really unique. So yeah. that that's, is one thing I always want to plug. Again, what night? It's Thursday nights. Thursday nights. From 6 to 8 p.m. It's Flava. every week at Flavor Cafe. Cool. It's called Reverb Open Mic. Right um, details are on our website. Uh, and our website is www.trueartspeaks.org. That's T R U A R T Speaks. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, you. <laughs> you're like, no E and True, right? No E and True. Right. Um, the other thing is, so we have this event. Um, it's the first time we've done it, you know, po post pandemic, mm -hmm. right? Um, every year we do an event. It's called the Endowment. And the Endowment is sort of, it is, it's our community-based fundraiser and dance party. And there's a philosophy behind the endowment that where it's annually, we want to remind ourselves that we power our work, mm -hmm. right? We have the power to power our work, to invest in the organizations, the people, and the work that we believe yep. in, right? So this fundraiser is, it's a dance party. It's an opportunity for us to come together um, and support the work of True Art Speaks, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, again, like we can power the work that we want to see. Um, and this year we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop. We've got B.Croc coming through representing hip hop, um, as well as Desdemona and Denami, who are hip hop artists. And also we're celebrating Desdemona's birthday. Oh, nice. So Desdemona turns 50 alongside hip hop. And Perfect. yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. And Desdemona is one of those um, five founding members of the B Girl B yeah. celebration here, has also been a long time sort of um, community member and artist mm -hmm. and mentor and steward of the arts in this community. And she's been generous with her time with our youth. Here. Yeah, exactly. And she's been a guest on Candy Fresh, I think. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, um, yeah. and she's on staff at True Art Speaks. Yeah. So we're, you know, so we've got Thomas Cena Petrus headlining the show and, um, you know, there's some surprises that are that are going to happen there. So that's April 15th. Um, cool. We're super excited about that. It's at Ice House. Ice House, they've yes. been longtime partners of Shore Speaks. Yeah. 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 So we're, we're looking forward to it. Nice. Yeah. Um, so you said we can find more info at trueartspeaks.org. Yes. Also, you're on all the socials. All the socials <laughs> at True Art Speaks. Yeah. No E and True. All right. <laughs> no, yeah. That can be your little tagline. No yeah. E and True. No E and True. <laughs> um, well, I thank you for being generous with your time. I love that that thread you were drawing through about generosity. Thanks for being generous with your time and your thoughts here. Thank you. Um, we have been here in the Kwame McDonald studio at SPNN with Tish Jones, founder and executive director of True Art Speaks. Please catch us again soon. Thanks. <laughs>